Well, hey, welcome back. I'm really excited today to have the number one agent in Norco. And this is, uh, this is a special treat because this is an agent from our office here at Keller Williams. Um, but I would like to introduce you today to Tanya Bambrook. Now, Tanya runs an incredible team, does an incredible volume of business, and has been in for 18 years. Um, so this, this should be a treat. And so without further ado, um, Tanya, welcome. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing great. So, um, Tanya, one of the things I like to do when we bring agents onto the podcast mm -hmm. is just to talk about um, the where did it begin, you know? Um, you were not born a realtor, right? No. Um, so, 18 years ago, you decided to get your real estate license. Where were you coming from? I actually was living in Las Vegas. Okay. And I sold a house out there. And the agent charged me, I don't know, 8 9% commission. Wow. And he made $45,000. Mind you, this is 2004 in Las Vegas. So... Um, I thought, well, gosh darn it, well, why can't I do that? So I went to real estate school in Nevada, but I decided to move to California and didn't finish and got my license here in 2004. Cool. Now, what were you doing? What, what was the background? What were you in? I was tw 14 years, 14 mm -hmm. years at Smith's Food and Drug, which I was a manager um, at the grocery store. And then after that, I did eight years uh, working for Steve Wynn in the casinos as a cocktail waitress. All right. So I've always been with customer service and, um, you know, working with people. So that's yeah. really played huge in my business cool. in real estate. So, so this is a theme that we, we've talked about over and over again with different guests is um, it's not about the experience you have. It's about bringing, it's not about having all the experience. It's about bringing the experience you have, mm -hmm. right? And so you learn customer uh, service from the casinos. Um, you then went into management and then you saw an opportunity. You had mm -hmm. to pay a real estate. A uh, you had to pay a lot. Yeah. 9% you said? Like I don't know what it was, but it was a lot because oh the prices gosh. out there are not as expensive as California. Yeah. Awesome. And so you got your license um, and came to California to practice real estate. Um, how did it start? Um, so I moved, I have horses. So I ended up actually in Corona, uh, it's this little pocket over there that has horse property. And, um, I had already said, I'm going to get my real estate license. I was going to go to, I think century 21. And then a neighbor, a couple doors down was at another company and she's like, Hey, I got my license, get licensed here. So I did. And, uh, that's where I, I started with over there at Tarbell worked there for 12 years. Okay. Um, so how did it start? Was it immediate success or? At that time, I thought it was a great success. I okay. closed uh, 3.75 million my first year in real estate being brand new. So I thought that was pretty good. And of course, that was, go that was basically 2005. Right. Then 2006 was another good run. And then 2007 hit. Right. Yeah. Which is the turn of the crash. Right. Absolutely. And so... Um, when you say, you know, you moved from Nevada, mm -hmm. you did, you know, 3 million in volume ish in your first year. Where'd that come from? Um, open house was the first thing. Okay. So my, I got my very first deal. And funny thing about this is that they didn't speak any English and I don't speak Spanish. Right. And they came to my open house in Orange County and they had a little mobile home to sell. And this mobile home, I didn't know because I'm new, you charge differently in commissions. You don't just charge 5%, 6%. You actually charge like flat fees. And so I didn't, apparently didn't charge enough. And so the buyer's agent on that um, said, I feel really bad for you. I'm going to go ahead and have my buyer pay my commission. So wow. um, that was my first deal. And then they purchased another one. And even though there was a language barrier, we got it done. And they absolutely you know, adored me and stuff. So I just made it happen. Nice. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So, um, so to a new agent starting in the business, you would say open, open house. house, always right. open house. And at yeah. that company we had front desk too, mm -hmm. and we were a really good location. So we would have walk-ins and so we'd have right. to work, do uptime on the front desk. And so I would get leads from there, but a lot, most of it was open house and front desk. Right. Awesome. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. The, the limiting mindsets that people have. Right. Like I don't know anybody um, or I don't have any clients or I don't have that big a database or my friends don't really know me that way. I don't want to bother them. How did you get past all of those limiting mindsets to I get your business to moving? <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. and what I did is I would sit in the computer room. Mm -hmm. I didn't have no transactions. I um, would sit in there and I would just listen to the bigger agents on the phone, watch them work. Oh, what are you doing? And I would just, I wouldn't shadow them, but I would just sit there even though I had nothing to do for the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, just listen to how they have those conversations with people really helped me how to have conversations with people when I met them. All right. This I love um, because I think it's, it's such a shortcut. 
right? Mm -hmm. Just listen to the way people talk about real estate. I showed up every day. Yeah. Every day I would show up. Absolutely. And it wasn't like you were mentoring or following them, but you were just absorbing what success looks and sounds like, mm -hmm. right? And I used to door, actually I used to door knock then. I don't door knock now, but I used to door knock and I would do it on rollerblades. <laughs> <laughs> I would get my rollerblades and I would roll up to people's doors. I'd knock on the door and I'd talk to people. So because the, you know, working for Steve Wynn, they have high, high end, um, you know, customer service. And also with the other company I worked at that I was just able to talk to people easily. And I've always just take that with my business. So I, and this is something I want to point out about, uh, about you as an agent and you as a person, like I, um, I love that. I, I rollerbladed uh, to do my door knocking. It was quicker. It was quicker, but it's also like you authentically being you. Mm -hmm. Like there's nothing about Tanya Bambrook who is pretending to be somebody else. You are exactly right. who you are, and that's mm -hmm. what you bring to your business, right? And I think that's what your clients respond to. Well, and we did it on horseback too. So okay. <laughs> finally I'd moved to Norco, and I put the saddlebags up, and I'd put door hangers in there, and I would get off the horse, or I'd go up to the driveway or put them in the driveway, had them in the bags, and I would do it on horseback too. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even show property on horseback. But I love it because it's it's such an incredible lesson to – to agents, maybe mid-level agents, or maybe beginning agents, um, or gosh, even some successful agents, to just say, listen, you don't, in this business, there's enough people out there mm -hmm. for you to find your people, right? right? Um, and you don't have to go out and, and be Chris Mueller, you don't have to be Tanya Bambrook, right. you go be you, and just be authentically you, and people respond to that, right? They, they want to do business, but when right. you pretend to be somebody else, they're kind of looking at you like, there's something not right here, right. you know? Yeah. Just being authentic. Yeah, absolutely. So you're with, you were with Tarbell, mm -hmm. um, and, and Tarbell was, uh, huge at one Oh time. yeah. They were massive. I mean, uh, you'd watch Tarbell expand as the market expanded and then contract when the market contracted and then mm -hmm. they expand again and they've, they've since, um, uh, sold, sold on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but you didn't stay with them until the sale. Uh, at some point you made a jump to, to KW. Right. Um, what was that about? My business started growing and I needed to know how to build a team. Mm -hmm. And I actually went to the president and I asked them, you know, hey, are you guys going to be showing us how to build a team? And they said, um, absolutely not. We're not going to be doing that. It's not profitable for us. And so most most agents, we are agents and we run around and we show houses and that's our job. And we don't really know much about business. But I was at the point where my business was scaling larger. I, I needed help. And um, I, I have my mentor, um, Sophia Chacon. She's my mentor. And um, she's always kind of beating on me. You need to do this, you need to do that. And I would just kind of ignore it. And, um, and one day, I, I, just, I finally had hired an assistant. Thankfully, I got lucky on her. And I made the right pick. And she's been with me for eight years. Um, but again, we're getting bigger. And I needed help. So um, I just walked into the I, Keller Williams. I need to stop you because mm -hmm. you just glossed over that. You've okay. had the same assistant for eight years. Yeah, that's un that's unbelievable. Right? Yeah, like it's no, one of know. the hardest positions to find in our industry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But but I you know I don't. This is not like um, I don't want to just like you know fluff. But that says something about you too, though. Right. Because right. there are a lot of people who would love to have an assistant for eight years, but people can't work with them. She told me, <laughs> I don't know, many years later, four or five years later, she goes, you know, I was going to quit on you the, the first week I was with you, but I didn't. I just and she goes, I would go home and I'm like, do I really want to work for this person? I actually found her on Facebook. OK. She had made a post. She had she had made a post and she said, um, um, I'm looking to use my bachelor's degree in business management and um, in business management and marketing to help someone grow their business. I've been a stay-at-home mom for the last eight years. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hmm, eh, let's see. Let's see what happens. And so, you know, sure enough, I interviewed her, and she started with me, and, she, and I can't do my business without her. She's the – that holds the team together. Right, and I think that's part of the mindset that's made you successful, right? Um, because there are some people who, when they go to build a team, they hire somebody to do the work they don't want to, and then they act like that person had no part in the success, mm -hmm. right? And you just said, no, no, she's a difference maker, right? Correct. All right. And yeah. I did not give her, they tell you to leverage within our company. They tell you to leverage and give them more and give them more. And I'm like, absolutely not. She's already <laughs> stressed out. I'm not giving her more work. And then my coach one day said, no, you're going to give her more work. I spoke to her 
And it freaked me out. And that was the best thing I did. All right. You said something there I want to get back to in a second, my coach. Mm -hmm. But let, let's continue with the story. So I, I interrupted you. So you, no, no, you had that first hire. You've had mm -hmm. it for eight years. Your business is growing. You had the idea of building a team, but you weren't getting the support in that. And I want to point out, we are not in my office today. We're not in my studio. We're in your mega agent right. office. Like this is a, it. this is the Tanya Bambrook team building, right? So yeah, obviously things, it. yeah, absolutely. So things, things went well, um, I think, but so tell me, tell me about the next steps. So I, I get to Keller Williams and immediately my mentor, Sophia, um, <laughs> drug me all over the United States. I probably spent about $25,000 in training because I wanted to take stuff to help me learn how to build a team. Again, other brokers just don't teach you this. So I wanted to take classes from the top of the top of the company. And although maybe I didn't use the information right away, I used it within my career and I still do as I start building. Mm -hmm. um, that was huge. It opened up my eyes. Um, I felt like for the last 12 years of real estate, I had blinders on and I didn't know what was out there. They brought me to, the reason why I came to Keller Williams was because they took me to family reunion prior to me leaving my brokerage. Okay. And that was huge for me. Um, All right. Inside baseball, what is, what is family reunion? Because oh, if you say that gosh. to me, I think, oh, great. You hung out with their cousins and aunts wow. and uncles and that must have been miserable. I would not want to have been there. But what yeah. is, what is family reunion? It is. It's so hard to explain until you experience it, but there's about 20, 25,000 different realtors and you get to pick classes. There's classes every two hours you go and you jump into another class and you pick what's relevant to your business at that time. Mm -hmm. So that year I picked mostly team building stuff. And then I took one about client appreciation, which is something big I'm big with now, but, um, you pick and choose what you want to learn. You're not going to remember everything from family reunion, but you want to at least walk away with two or three things. And it just, it was, it's mind blowing. It's yeah. mind blowing. And, it, and it shows you how big you can make your business. What I, what I'm, there's a theme that's, that's coming out here, um, in the development of Tanya Bambrook is surround yourself by people who are doing things you want to do. 100%. Right? Um, and I love it because a, it's super smart, but B, um, there's humility there. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, and I think sometimes people come to the industry and they go, uh, they think they're going to get points for originality, right? There are no points for originality. Right. Um, and they think that, well, I don't need to do it that way. Right. They want to, mm -hmm. and I always say this, I think they want to play jazz before they learn how to play their scales. Right. And so they just start going out there and throwing stuff at the wall when right. it's like, no, surround yourself by smart people who are doing what you want to do and learn as much as you can from them. And you've said, uh, at Tara Bell, it was listening to the top producers. You've mentioned coach a couple times. You've mentioned mentor Sophia, right? You've mentioned now family reunion where you were just learning from these people. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a, that's a really, I think it's a really important note, right? Mm -hmm. Um, how are you doing that now? Um, well, COVID's made it kind of hard to, to scale things. Mm -hmm. Um, but I still have, um, prior to me leaving Keller Williams, Sophia put me in a, a group. It's, we call it ladies of grace. It's like eight women, but all the women are high producing agents. One of them owns her own office. Forgot how many agents she has. Um, and they they we're all from different brokerages, but it wasn't about recruiting or any of that. It was a sharing information. We become friends, but we also share how we scale our business and every year, each one of them grows. So we still have met through COVID. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, um, you know, I'm going to family reunion this year. I'm excited about it. And also I went and did her best life, which was with Wendy Papazon and like mm -hmm. all the, all the top women in Keller Williams. Um, and I, I went and I did that in September and that was really huge. Um, that kind of, light up my fire again to to mm -hmm. get training in person and it wasn't really all real estate it was also about yourself and development and business development and you know building passive income and growing your future right yeah so. absolutely and and that's um again this theme of surrounding myself with people who are doing what i want to do who can feed into me so i don't just become just somebody on my own you know mm -hmm. um I think that's a danger in this industry where you can end up just uh, seeing yourself as a lone wolf, right? Right. That's exhausting. It you is know? very exhausting. Um, you know, and you, it's funny, you like wolves, right? Wolves, you'll see, they'll put the strong at the front and they push through the snow and then they'll fade back and somebody else takes the front. They put, and they continually cycle through. And it, and I think that's a great metaphor. You are, um, 
you're letting people blaze trails and then you're going to push, you push to the front, right? Mm -hmm. But you're smart enough to go, okay, now I need to get a recharge. And you go back to, I need you it. know, family reunion or, or uh, women of grace or, you know, uh, Wendy Papazan. Mm -hmm. And that, that is, um, again, there's some wisdom there for sure. I almost would be right now in, where was I going, Alicia? Now Alicia's uh, Alicia's Tanya's She's assistant who's sitting who's sitting uh, here. It would yeah. have been um, yeah. what are those tropical islands? Uh, Turks and Caicos with <laughs> Winnie Pappas on right now. But I because I purchased this building, I decided not to go. Okay. So. Wow. Yeah. Turks and Caicos or, uh, and or they're all there right now, <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. Cause you did, you, you made, you know, you, you took a chance on this, right. And now we're at the point where we're seeing some fruition. This was a, a dream that you had, um, you for bought years. the building for years. You know, I always, even when I was at Tarbella, I always said, I'm going to own that Keller Williams up on the Hill. Well, it's not for sale. So I opened my Omega agent mm -hmm. office instead in Norco. And that's, and the, you joined, you joined uh, Kelly Williams Riverside Norco and, mm -hmm. and we're super excited to have you as part of that and team. And I couldn't do sure. this without my team. It, yeah. You know, Alicia's um, came on full time in May and really re ramped everything up since then. So mm -hmm. uh, awesome. Okay. So um, family reunion was a difference maker for you, but just this sort of Kelly Williams mega conference where you can really be with the best of the best mm -hmm. um, and pick up those tools, those tips. I love you said something about, um, and I didn't apply everything at first. No, it's overwhelming. Yeah. It's okay. overwhelming. If you go in there and think, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do this, you're going to try to do the world of everything. You're, you're going to fail. Right. You have to focus on one or two things and, and walk away with that. Okay. And utilize it and implement it. Yeah. And I'm, so one thing I did from Family Reunion was my client events. Okay. And that has been really huge to stay in touch with my clients. They absolutely love it. I'm always um, doing stuff for them. And that's something that I learned from Family Reunion, one of the cl classes that I've taken. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so let me, let me ask you a question. And this is more of a vulnerability question, though. Um, where have the mistakes been along the way? Um, not being organized. Um, not reading. I don't like to read. Okay. So I still have never got through the millionaire real estate book yep. and, um, having a structure. I find myself still acting as an entrepreneur and realtor and running around still with the rat race and not slowing down for me to be able to focus on building the business and systems and being real organized with that. If it's just me, it's fine, but I have other people that depend on me as well. So mm -hmm. that's something that is huge for me. I need to work on that. I need to slow down and I need to, um, really work on, being a better leader and better systems. Okay, I want to I want to break that down because you said entrepreneur, and I think uh, in in the Keller Williams ecosystem, um, we talk about entrepreneur as moving from entrepreneur to purposeful, mm -hmm. right? In the rest of the world, they go, well, I'm an entrepreneur, and it's kind of like this badge of honor, and mm -hmm. it is, right? You take a chance, but um, at some point, and this is where what, what, I, what I hear you saying is. The entrepreneur is a sole proprietor who is responsible for everything. It mm -hmm. is a hustle-based life, mm -hmm. and that's exhausting because your hustle can only take you so far. Right. And so you obviously hustle. You're the number one agent in Norco. You've built this team. Uh, and I think other people would look at you, and they would say, well, what are you talking about? You've got Alicia, and then you've got your assistant. You've got your own mm -hmm. building. You've got your mm -hmm. own team. You're doing all this. And you're saying, no, I know that in my business, I'm still trying to be the hustler who's in charge of everything. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm still learning to let things go. It's hard. It's hard to step away from that. I'm still somewhat of a control freak, and it's really hard to step away from stuff and delegate stuff, you know, to other people. I was a proud moment the other day. I was just me and Alicia going to come in. We didn't tell anybody else to come in because I had so much to do. And I get here, and I have my other assistant training the new agent. And I'm like, well, what are you guys doing here? They yep. took it upon themselves to make sure that they're – they're doing stuff even without me telling them. So that was like a real proud moment the other day. Yeah, absolutely. Because what it's telling you is they feel ownership, mm -hmm. right? Um, they are thinking autonomously. I'm not, I don't need to think for them. And I've created a culture where, where they're invested in each other's success, right? They're right. part of the team. Mm -hmm. And again, Tanya, that doesn't happen to ever, for everyone. That no. there's, that's a humble leader. I have know. with all the training I've been through, I've seen so many teams, literally their entire team will blow up over a weekend and they're all gone. And then they have to rebuild and restructure and redo it again. The thing for me is I've kept people for a long time and the way they're going to leave is going to be because of me. 
Mm -hmm. If I'm not doing what I need to do, if I'm treating them where they're don't, where the culture is not good for them, that's when I will lose my people. Yeah. And so a couple times I've gotten a little feisty and had, you know, just so much on my plate where I almost did. And I have, I look back at that and I'm like, I cannot lose the people I have. I've worked so hard and I have amazing people. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I love that, what you just said, because it's, it's a mindset that you have to have to be successful in building a team Mm -hmm. is I'm responsible for these people. Mm -hmm. Like this is their livelihoods depend on me. Mm -hmm. And there are times, yes, when I'm exhausted, I'm a little hangry. I want to, I want to tear someone's head off and I go, me never. <laughs> I invest. Yeah. <laughs> right. But, but that, but that, but to step back and go, wait, no, I've invested way too much in these yeah. people and I care about them enough that I, I know when I need to remove myself or step back and take a breath or whatever mm-hmm. that is, you know? Right. Um, I, I love when I first met you, um, you said something that I found so insightful. You said, yeah. And I bring Alicia with me cause she'll tell me I can't say that. Right. Um, it, it was a funny thing to say. <laughs> Alicia's laughing off camera. It, it, it was, to be quite honest with you, it's like, you know, she's always worked with me, but she's had a full time job. So when she came in May, all of a sudden Alicia's at my house every single day. And, you know, it's during COVID. So she's hearing my conversations with people. She's hearing how I talk to them. And I'm so overwhelmed and I'm so frustrated. And I just got so much going on. She's like, Tanya, you cannot talk to people like that, you know. They don't care what's going on with your life. They don't care that you got this going on over there. All they care about is, is, is your focus on them right now, and you can't do that. So I 100% believe that her coming on full-time has really helped this business scale yeah. because most of my sales, and I started off very slow because I didn't really feel like working hard in the beginning of the year. But, I mean, we pretty much, you know, we made 20, we closed $27 million and most of that was the last six months of oh, yeah. this year. Oh yeah. And that's because she's helped bring me down a level. I, and, but again, that's a leader who is acknowledging the role her, the team has, right? Mm-hmm. And that's why the team can be successful. That's why you can have retention. Um, that's fantastic. So, um, I, one of the questions I love to ask people like yourself is what are some of the great stories you know, what are the, the, the things you look back on your real estate, your career, and you go, we changed somebody's life, you know, um, and that, you know, what, what are those? Any of those come to mind? Oh, gosh. So we changed somebody's life. Come on, Alicia, help me think. <laughs> Jackie. I do. So uh, Alicia off, uh, off camera is reminding uh, Tanya about some I, of the things. I forget these things. I know I remember them at the moment, yeah. but I, I've just, I've helped people get where they, you know, get where they need to go. I may, I take things off their plate. Um, something I do with my business and a lot of people are not in the position to do this, do this is that I will pay for stuff up front to make their life easy so that we can make the transaction go smooth. Some a house, I just painted a house for somebody, the whole entire exterior because all the paint was peeling off and chipping. And what if we got a VA buyer or what if we got, what if even on a conventional, it was so bad or they would talk the house down because right. it was just so horrible and you've got rotting wood just falling off the house. So I got all that fixed, you know, it was costly, but you know what? I have it and I just get it back in escrow. So I, I do a lot of things to help them prep their properties so that I don't want them to be stressed. I don't want the buying and selling process for them to be stressful. Mm-hmm. So I take the stress off of them by helping them right. with my resources. Yeah, I love that. Um, you know, and that is, it's funny because as realtors, we can think of like, uh, and I'll hear these conversations from people where they'll say things about their clients, right? Like, oh, this person's this or this person's that. And like, of course they are. This is an incredibly stressful thing to do. It's and it's my job to take that stress. It's my job to make it easy. It's my job to to get them to the the successful conclusion of this so they can look back and say, well, that was a great, it was a great process, mm-hmm. you know, and so that's one of the things you're doing for your clients. So we're here in your in your building. I mentioned that, so um, and it, it really has turned out beautifully. I didn't expect to buy this. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of I got frustrated because I kept I was selling this property and everybody kept lowballing it, and I'm like, why are they paying over asking price on these residential properties? This one has a house. It's an acre. It's commercial. Yeah. And they kept lowballing it, and I'm like, well, why don't I buy it? And one of the best opportunities for me was. Century 21, old time, closed down on 6th Street. So there was really no major real estate office here in Norco, so mm-hmm. on, on the main street. So yeah. So why not? Well, and, it, and it's, a great, it's a great property. Um, but I guess the question then is, what's next? Where do we go um, from here? 
I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do actually, um, in the future, I actually want to expand in Nevada because that's where I'm from, from Vegas. And okay. I have a lot of um, ex-cocktail waitresses and stuff that are um, realtors and a lot of people I know out there. So eventually I would like to expand. Um, what's next? I'm not really sure. Maybe okay. Build the team bigger. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Okay. Well, I mean, I expand in Orange County too. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I ask you that question, you know, it's funny. I can ask that question to a lot of people, but I, I also have some insight into, um, you, like I said, buying a home is stressful, buying a building and renovating it and doing, uh, the volume that you're doing at the same time and getting COVID in all of that. Right. And and, and having a whole team of five working out of a one bedroom house with a dog barking at us all day long. (laughs) So when I ask you that question of what comes next, it's almost not fair because I know that you've been just like, you have done such an incredible job of getting through such a stressful season that right now you're like, I just want to breathe, you know, like, and that's totally okay. So I, my guess is you're going to come back from family reunion and that's when, that's when your team's going to be like, Chris, you got to find out what's next. And you know, that's, that's what's going on. And you know, for family reunion, I wasn't going to go because this COVID outbreak is really bad right now. It's, it's next month. It's less than 30 days away from now. Mm -hmm. But my assistant insisted that I go. She said, every time I go, I come back more energized. I have more information. I have great ideas. I, I just come back and then we just kill it even more. So, um, even though I almost canceled it, I'm listening to my assistant because she knows me extremely well. Yeah. Right. You know, it's, uh, this podcast is supposed to be neutral ground. Um, and I, and it's hard because your story is so intertwined with Keller Williams. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, you mentioned family reunion, this mega conference of the top realtors around the world and, uh, and from, from KW, the largest real estate company in the world. And, and I'm now I'm blowing the trumpet, but, um, it's hard to be neutral when the company and the culture has such an impact on you and on your business. It has, it has the, the culture with the company and the tools they have to succeed. Every, any agent, even if you're not working at Keller Williams, you can take the same tools and classes I have. And mind you, they're outside of the office, but they're within the company. They don't care who you're from. They won't recruit you when you go to these classes. And, but knowing what to take to get your business to the next level I didn't have these tools where I was at and you're not going to have these tools at a lot of other places. Mm -hmm. You just won't know what you don't know. You don't know. Right. And fortunately for me, I had someone to tell me what to do. Yeah. Which was my mentor. Yeah. I I love that because I love what you just said. Cause I try to tell people this all the time. Like I'm not really recruiting people. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, you know, people, I will call people to have a conversation to talk about building their business. They go, well, I don't want to move. I don't want to be recruited. I'm like, I'm not recruiting you. Mm -hmm. I don't know you, Mm -hmm. but I would love to help you build your business. And if it makes sense, then that's, that's different. Like for you, um, you know, so any agent from any company can take any Keller's can take any class at a Keller Williams or go to family Family reunion and make a camp, you name it. Yeah. You can go. Yeah. Awesome. And what would your advice be to somebody who is at that plateau place. Maybe they're a brand new agent. They're just trying to get to 12. Maybe they've been sitting at 15 for the last five years and they want to go to the next step. Maybe they're Seek education, oh, Seek yeah? education and take something, um, you know, something that's, uh, you know, there's so many opportunities at Keller Williams, but if it's not Keller Williams somewhere else, seek, seek that constant training, find agents that you can create your own group. Like Sophia did with us and put agents that sell more than you Mm -hmm. together so that you can learn together as a through each other because I'm sure even if that person doesn't sell all that they still have great ideas that maybe they just haven't realized it was a great idea or they can pick something up from somewhere else my business was hugely built on social media that's where mine was built I want to back up a step because you said seek education and for a good portion of the people hearing that there are a lot of people are like, I'm not a book person. I'm not a class person. I didn't go to college. I didn't do this. I'm not going to do that. That's not what you said. No, they're they're like a one day or two day event. Mm -hmm. Most is a three day event. Just depends on what it is. Um, But I've, I've flown all over. I've flown to Oregon, Washington, um, God, I did. Uh, oh, I got to stay down in San Diego at the uh, what was that Hotel de oh, Coronado. Ho- yeah, that yeah. was really nice. Yeah. Uh, New Orleans, you name it, Texas. I've been all over the place to to better myself and my business. Mm-hmm. Next is going to be personal development. Yeah, I love it. And you know, you mentioned the other, just a little bit ago. Well, I haven't even finished the millionaire real estate agent. 
that doesn't mean, like you know, and you, if you're exactly, well, you hear that though, because you said education and a lot of people go, I don't like to read. And you're like, I don't like to read, but I'm getting the education mm -hmm. and you haven't, maybe you haven't finished it, but you built a millionaire real estate agent business. You're building a million, I'm you know, following the model. Yeah. And I have a bookkeeper that, that follows the MREA, which is huge. Yeah. Again, most realtors are, don't have P and L's. Most realtors don't have a bookkeeper. They'll put their receipts like I used to in a shoebox and then count it up at the end of the year and try to do their taxes. That's not the way of running business. No, it's, it's a way to get an ulcer. <laughs> you know, absolutely. It's just what I thought. I just did it. I did, which you don't know. You don't know. I didn't know. Right. Right. Until I got the tools throughout the company. I took a class by Brian Green, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. um, and he was um, family reunion. He's a, he's a trainer. It was a, one of the classes I popped in at. And I was so happy because this was at the last one in uh, 2020. And he was telling everybody what to exactly do to, you know, build your business and properly have a business, be a business owner. And I'm like, oh, I got three out of the six. Like I, I was on track with half the stuff and there was a few more things I still have to work on. I love but I, I, I like the fact that I'm in the right track mm -hmm. with that. You know, Tanya, um, I, I, I've gotten to know you a little bit over, over the last, I don't know, six oh, months I'm or however long. Yes. Um, <laughs> 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 no, I, I, but I, I know there's so many avenues we could go down and we're going to have to do another interview because I want to, you know, we're about a half an hour. I try to keep these around that time frame. Um, but there's the roller club. Oh, there's, uh, oh, there's Facebook, the, social media, there's the golf cart media. club. There's a the yes. social media. There's you, there's so many things that you do that I think people can benefit from. Um, yes. but, uh, the takeaway from today, I think if there's any takeaway from today's conversation, it's, um, you're not alone. Surround mm -hmm. yourself with top, uh, top people, right. so, uh, find people who are doing what you want to do and, and listen, um, and just have the humility to, to do that. And then, um, and treat, Take responsibility for your business and for the people you bring into your business. 100%. All right. Tanya, it awesome. has been an, an absolute pleasure. Thank every, you for having me. Time. Next one's social media. Yeah. Th thank you for having <laughs> me. Your, 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 your office is gorgeous. Um, you know, <laughs> and uh, I, you know, I guess next week we'll be sitting down for our monthly top producer lunch. So Yay. I will see you there. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you All so right. much for having me. No problem. All right. See you later, everybody. Thanks Bye. for tuning in. Bye. Bye. Bye.